Hi, this is Yohos Apni Bhartiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Christina Forney, VP of Product at Uplevel. Christina, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Today the topic is to understand, you know, uh, people health, especially when we look at today's world. It is the mental health, people health. It's, it's becoming a very interesting topic. But before we deep dive into this topic, I would love to know a bit about the company as well and what led you to this uh, discussion today. Uplevel is an engineering intelligence platform. So it helps engineering organizations make better data-driven decisions and iteratively improve how they deliver software or value or product to their end users and ultimately deliver greater business value. Um, We are able to combine an understanding of your operational health and your execution health with your process health, so how well you're collaborating, and then The kicker of what we're going to talk about today is your people health. What are your people actually doing to deliver that software in there? Are they doing it in a sustainable way? Why are we talking about people health? What does it mean in today's world where once again, uh, uh, because of recession, because of cost cutting, teams are also becoming smaller. We also talk about a lot of things are moving to developers pipeline. Earlier, we used to have like uh, traditional IT word silos. Now, you know, uh, you have to also learn a lot of skills. People are working from home. So I want to understand, you know, is it because of this whole, the way the dynamics are changing or in general uh, that, you know, we should be talking about it? I think it's something that we should have been talking about the whole time. I think uh, the changes to industry, um, our recent pandemic, everyone having to learn to work remotely, um, leaders not being able to just look over your shoulder and see what you're doing anymore, but actually have to look at the output you're providing. And so fundamentally, I think this is actually going to be an improvement in how we deliver because we're looking at outcomes rather than just how much time am I spending in my seat. Now, what's important to consider as you think about um, what you're looking at when you're looking at your people is you don't want to be just spying on them. It's not about how many hours they're putting in. Uh, Engineering is such a creative field your greatest like aha moments often happen in the shower or when you're on a walk with your dog. And so if you just can't measure it the same way that you measure um, general kind of uh, creation of products, the, the, the original um, pipeline. Uh, And so I think it's really exciting that we're starting to look at these, these metrics and, Ultimately, what we want to do is help people, help engineering organizations remove the burden on the people. And so what that means is, how do we reduce the toil? How do we make sure that people aren't spending their entire days in meetings so that they then have to do their deep work time and their hard thinking time after hours, which means they're actually extending the total number of hours that they're working. Because what we actually see in the data is that there is an inverse correlation between the amount of deep work time. So am I getting enough time to actually get into flow, to get into focus. Um, At up level, we measure that as a minimum of two hours of focus. And so do I have enough deep work time to really solve these hard problems for my organization? Or am I getting interrupted all the time? Like maybe I have two hour calendar open space, but I'm getting interrupted nonstop in chat. Or, um, I'm context switching around too many different projects. I don't have focus. So there's a lot of dimensions here, but ultimately what we want to look at is how do we help engineers write, like reach their greatest potential and um, they're going to be happier and they're going to deliver better, higher quality software for their organization. Right. And when you're talking about the aha moment, you know, Socrates Eureka moment is, you know, one of those moments, you know, when you're in the bathtub, you can get a great idea or find a solution. Uh, I, I don't want to name the organizations, but I was talking to an organization which is fully remote. And they are also, we also, is, yes, we, uh, because of remote, we do have to look at, you know, the productivity, but we also want to look at that you are not working longer hours, you are not working, you know, so it should not have a negative impact on your mental health as well. So as much as we want you to work, we 
also don't want you to uh, work because you're a valuable asset team member of our team as well. So uh, that is also a factor that I think today organizations are taking into consideration. Uh, can you talk a bit about, because when I was listening to you, it looks like it's more or less, of course, as you said, it's not a spying, but it is very, very data-centric, data-driven uh, database. So what kind of data you think that executives need so that they have a very good pulse on the entire organizations or what kind of data you are providing or they are seeking? I like to bucket this into three different categories. Again, your operations or execution health. Uh, this can come in the form of um, metrics like DORA. DORA is starting to be a much more kind of accepted standard of how you measure um, whether or not your teams are shipping. We combine that with your process health. So looking at volume of meetings your team has. Are we in too many meetings or do we just have really scattered calendars that look like Swiss cheese that we've got to clean up and realign across the organization to help people get more focused time um, as well as sprint health kind of metrics. Um, and then the third and the very important piece to add in is your people health metrics, which we've started talking about today. And so as an executive, as a leader, what you need to understand is what truly is going on across my organization. Because so often what we see is executives or leaders are just so disconnected from what's actually happening within their organizations. They don't really know what's going on. And so as a leader, maybe I'm saying these are, you know, we have these two initiatives that are the most important things our business could do. And this is how we have to deliver value. Um, and the, I expect that our organization is spending the majority of their time working on these initiatives. But the reality is, is that developers are spending 80, 90% of their dev working time on customer support issues or keep the lights on work because things are just failing or you know systems are going awry. And there's just such a big disconnect between what's actually happening and how, and how developers are spending their time and what engineering leaders often understand, especially as you enter these really, really large organizations. So by starting from a place where I can actually understand what's happening across the organization, how are people spending their time? How are we executing? How are we operating? And then how are my people doing to actually achieve that? Are we overextending or can we push a little harder? And having that clear picture is key to having the ability to dig in and understand this is what I can do as a leader to help support my organization, to help my organization improve. No matter how well we're doing, we can always get better. And so what are the things that I can do to make it a better environment for an engineer, for a developer? Because then I'm focusing on creating a better environment and helping my team deliver more value. I think a key of this is that we're not just building a tool for engineering leaders because a biggest part of the disconnect is that we don't bring the teams along with us. We need to solve for the organization. As I've done so many different customer interviews, talked to many, many leaders as well as developers, what you see is that actually engineering leaders and engineering teams have the same problems because fundamentally they're organizational problems. They just might be two sides of the same coin. And so by solving for your entire organization and helping connect what's actually happening within your development teams to what do we need to do as a business, as an engineering organization, we create a more aligned, more focused, more streamlined group. I think one or two weeks ago, there was a big controversial story about where else, I, once again, I don't know how to name the company where the CEO was on Zoom call and it was more about, you know, she was totally disconnected uh, from uh, the the whole organizations. Uh, so, yes, there are a lot of leaders who are really into, you know, uh, the health of their organizations. But of course, if you look at in general, do you think this approach also make leaders talk to your CEOs more empathetic towards their teams as well to help them actually understand uh, that, you know, what their teams are going through so they can become more efficient leader as well? I certainly hope so. It's what I believe. I think 
uh, this is kind of an emerging field and an emerging category. There's a lot of different players in the space taking on a, a few different lenses and a few different perspectives. Um, my hope is that we can really bring a human-centric approach to engineering organizations and engineering leadership and just how we build software because we're building software or we're building product for people. And so by making it just making it a better better all around experience, uh, you'll build better product. Um, so I really hope that these kinds of metrics do create empathy understanding. Um, it's a lot easier to get frustrated and judgmental and um, impatient with things you don't understand. And so by creating that understanding, both within the leadership and within your team's perspectives. You can kind of connect the dots and create greater cohesion and um, generally just have a more motivated and aligned organization. Since we are talking about data, do you have any insight about, uh, you know, when we look at the hard data on developer team health, what does it look like? What do you see today? What we see is that every organization is unique and has slightly different problems, although there's always kind of the same themes and same patterns that we look for within that data. So it really depends on the context. And so something that we work really hard at UpLevel to do is how do we help you understand what's going on in a way that allows you to add the context to the story of that data. And so the patterns we am, that are emerging, so I kind of shared one of the, the big themes and patterns that we see is that there is an inverse relation between the amount of deep work time people have and how much they're always on metrics are exceeding. So what that means is if, my, if I'm not getting enough hours during the day to do my deep work or during the week to do my deep work, I will find that time after hours. And so that means my always on meaning how many hours I'm extending beyond a normal day uh, will, will extend. So if I don't get deep work at work, I get deep work in my own time and I'm, I'm overworking myself to get that done. And so the quality of my work may go down because that's a high contributor towards burnout. Um, we also see a lot around uh, meeting health developers spending just way too much time in meetings. Um, just insane amounts of time in meetings. And so helping to reduce that, and as I said, even organize calendars in a way so that I'm still getting focused time, even though I am in meetings. Because there is an important piece of being in meetings and collaborating and having live discussions. You don't want to remove it entirely. But you want to make sure you understand how are we spending that. So we can break that down and look at the different types of meetings that you have. Am I spending 40% of our time in scrum meetings. Is that okay? Because we're a scrum organization and that's what we would expect. Or is that actually a really big problem and we want to bring that number down? Do we have an initiative where we're trying to reduce knowledge silos across the organization? If so, I'd really love to see the volume of collaboration type meetings, uh, pair programming type meetings go up. And if I don't see that, that's a really good way for me as a leader to understand that my teams aren't investing or collaborating in the way that I'm trying to drive change. It allows me to actually measure what I'm trying to help the team improve upon. Before we wrap this up, uh, I also want to talk a bit about, you know, from the, from the leadership or if you look at CTOs, uh, what is your advice to them, how they can create a kind of organization, you know, as you mentioned, so that, you know, the teams are more effective, the health of the overall organization is also uh, better, and that is good for overall sustainability for the whole ecosystem as well. My number one advice is to create transparency and understanding in what you're looking at. So by helping your development teams know what's happening across the organization, they're going to be more bought in and more motivated to help you make that change. So have, building that trust, building that transparency, one, just creates a more aligned organization. And two, um, really builds trust with developers. Developers are incredibly suspicious of being tracked and monitored. And so it's really important that you show them this is what we're looking at. This, we're doing this in support of you and to help you have a better experience. Um, and it also helps them be bought into change. And so as an example, I talked about meeting times. So maybe 
your your entire organization just is spending like you don't you're not in too many meetings but your meetings are all over the place so nobody's ending up getting deep work and so if you go down and make this broad policy and just say we're changing all of our meetings you have to change your calendars everybody is not you know we're going to have a focus day on this day of the week and so you have to change your calendars as a developer who might actually have enough deep work time, they're going to be really frustrated. Hey, you're changing up my schedule. I have to go change how I'm working. Why do I have to do this? This isn't my problem. Instead, what you can say is look at the pattern that we're seeing across the organization and the consequences this is having to us as a whole and us as a group. We aren't getting enough deep work time. And so in order to help support our organization, we're going to have this policy that we don't have meetings on a certain day. You're going to have a developer who's much more bought in because they have that understanding of why this matters. And it's not just about them and their schedules, but it's about the organization as a whole and how they can contribute to a better working environment for their peers. So that little story is, again, just to reiterate, you need to build trust through transparency and visibility. How you measure productivity is super multifaceted because Ultimately, productivity in the dictionary is defined and you measure as the rate of output per unit input. And output is one thing for engineering organizations, but the reality is what we want to look at is outcomes, what is actually happening. Um, and so different ways of thinking about this are and other words that you can go and really I encourage you to lean into the dictionary definition. Things like efficient, efficiency, effective, effectiveness, velocity, or capacity. Which one of those components is actually the problem my organization is facing? And by act, digging into the deeper layers of what's going on, helps you pinpoint and understand how I can support my organization the best. Christina, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this uh, important topic. Uh, thanks for all those insight and also the advice there. Yes, this that could, uh, most guys it's like, hey, that could have been just an email, you know, <laughs> not necessarily a meeting. <laughs> At the same time, uh, when you meet people in person, you can solve problems, you know, in, within minutes, which would have taken days just. So, so it, you know, for different, you know, kind of uh, situation, different approaches needed. So thanks for sharing all those insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much.